With the yellow and blue pom-pom plague rustling through the stands and reaching epidemic proportions in the Coliseum, once hypercritical Ram rooters are now bona fide die-hard believers. Los Angeles coach Ray Malavese would certainly enjoy tracing Denver coach Red Miller's path of last year by being the only other rookie head coach to guide his team to a Super Bowl berth. Ram quarterback Pat Hayden, considered one of the most intelligent in the league, will need more than boundless wisdom to overcome the likes of the Dallas defensive front. At only 5 feet 11, Hayden may find it difficult in spotting his receivers with the 6 foot 9, too tall Jones towering over him throughout the game. Cool Tom Landry of Dallas treats this all-important NFC championship game not as a panic-filled winner-take-all battle royale. Rather, the cerebral cowboy considers it as a mission or assignment, which he has undertaken many times before, inevitably ending in a Dallas job well done. Like Landry quarterback Roger Staubach, despite sustaining a mild concussion during the 27-20 Dallas win over Atlanta, is the king of cowboy cool. He refuses to become boiled over. Instead, he operates at a controlled, effective simmer. Los Angeles fans can only hope that Rodgers' usually sticky-fingered receivers lose their concentration and drop a few in the Coliseum sun. The Cowboys' esteemed prophet, his radiance Thomas Henderson, predicts that it will be the Rams who will be today's victims. We shall soon discover the soothsayer's reliability. The wide-open world champion Dallas Cowboys take on the stingy and hard-hitting Rams. From the Los Angeles Coliseum, it's the NFC Championship game, the NFL Game of the Week. If anyone in the realm of pro football thinkers was wondering if Staubach's concussion suffered the previous week would render him squeamish or protective, Roger cleared up any misconception on Dallas's third play of the game. Ready and willing to take his licks, Roger fired the Cowboys downfield. Ruling that Drew Pearson only had one foot in bounds, the reception was called incomplete. Although Pearson saw it a bit differently, the drive was stalled. Hayden called on number 22, John Capaletti, Penn State's Heisman Trophy winner, to get the Rams started. Dallas's All-Pro safety Charlie Waters, number 41, who was to have an outstanding game defensively, was responsible for this fumble recovery. His alert handiwork gave Dallas the ball on the Ram 30, and Staubach went to work quickly. His pinball completion deserves a second look, which reveals that the ball bounced directly off the chest of intended receiver Drew Pearson into the arms of Tony Dorsett. Unfortunately for Dallas, this bit of good fortune was to be transformed into hard luck in the Ram end zone. Scott Laidlaw's fumble was recovered by defensive end Jack Youngblood, saving the Rams six. But another look through the lens of a super slow camera shows how three Cowboys failed to recover the ball before Captain Jack saved the day for Los Angeles. While the stymied Cowboys felt the stinging arrow of misfortune, Hayden shot one of his own deep, hoping to catch the vaunted Dallas secondary off guard.
Cowboy co-captain Randy Hughes was wide awake and up, and Hayden was halted. In fact, both teams found scoring most difficult in the first half. One reason for the pair of goose eggs was a rash of almosts and not quites suffered by Ram and Cowboy alike. In addition to the offensive near misses were the tremendous stifling defenses displayed by both clubs. Number 79, Harvey Martin, co-MVP in last year's Super Bowl, is a great deal to contend with, and perhaps the meanest of the mean was Martin. Despite the threats of Martin and his teammates, Hayden finally generated some Ram offense. Rhodes Scholar's sizable scramble was followed two plays later by a successful crossing pattern completion over the middle to Ron Jesse, number 81. Jesse has been a most reliable target all season long for the Rams. His touchdown reception against the Vikings in the first round of the NFC playoffs contributed largely to the Rams' victory. His catch gave Frank Corral a chance to break the deadlock. Corral, who had been wide right on an earlier chance, was off to the left by a little more than a foot. At the end of a scoreless 30 minutes, one had to wonder if any team would crack through. One such individual was Dallas speed marvel Tony Dorsett, who wondered if he would be the one to penetrate the end zone first. He wouldn't have long to ponder the mystery. Beginning the second half, Staubach came out firing. Cornerback Pat Thomas had Billy Joe Dupree covered perfectly, and his interception gave Hayden an opportunity to fight fire with fire. Charlie Waters' interception put the Rams in hot water as this time Rodgers' Raiders were now ready to take advantage. Sure enough, it was Tony Dorsett who did score first. And a replay from atop the uprights shows how the Ram defensive flow was no match for Mr. Dorsett's acceleration. After 36 minutes of scoreless football, Dallas had finally broken through. Based on the defensive nature of the game thus far, the Coliseum crowd had to wonder if the lone Dallas touchdown might just be enough of a winning margin to defeat their Rams. Gathering storm clouds began to hover over the Coliseum. Almost a warning to the Rams that gloomy times might be ahead unless they prevented any further Dallas outbursts. But temporarily at least, Dallas's Preston Pearson, number 26, 
had no intention of cooperating. But Pearson's gain was wiped out by a penalty, and then the Cowboys were set even further back when defensive tackle Mike Fanning, number 79, barged in on Staubach. Once again, the Ram defense had held. Now with Dallas punting deep in their own territory, L.A. was almost assured of getting good field position. Then number 20, Jackie Wallace, the NFC's leading punt returner, turned that probability into a lead pipe cinch. Wallace's return brought the ball inside the Dallas 25. After three subsequent plays, the Rams were still a yard short of a first down. On fourth and one, they gambled and went for it. The gamble did not pay off. In retrospect, this was a turning point in the game, although at the time it didn't seem so since the Ram defense continued to push Dallas back on its heels. Whether it was a gadget play or the basic off-tackle run, nothing was working for the Cowboys. Soon added to the list of failed plays was the pass, thanks to Ram safety Nolan Cromwell, number 21. Cromwell's interception seemed to pump some life into the Ram offense as they logged a quick first down after the turnover. But soon after, an old nemesis appeared, Charlie Waters and in almost a replay of his previous heist, Waters stole this one and ran it all the way back to the Ram 20. Pete shows that the ball was slowed up enough for Waters to make a fingertip grab, thanks to a hit by number 54, Randy White, on quarterback Hayden. For the next 30 yards, it was a clear path for Waters until Ram Pursuit finally caught up. Dallas was now in great shape to score again, but even more significant was the fact that on the play, Hayden fractured the thumb on his throwing hand. Unable to even grip the ball, let alone throw it, Hayden was forced to the sidelines for the rest of the game. The next time L.A. got the ball, young Vince Ferragamo would be the quarterback. But the immediate problem at hand was the Dallas offense, and that problem quickly became a crisis when Preston Pearson's reception brought the ball down inside the five. After calling a running play that lost yardage, the Cowboys came back with a pass, a quick toss to Scott Laidlaw. Laidlaw had only one man to beat to get into the end zone, and he did just that to put Dallas in front by two touchdowns. Laidlaw's third touchdown of the playoffs made it 14 to nothing Cowboys early in the fourth quarter. The situation was now becoming grave for the Angelinos, and matters weren't helped any when on their next series, new quarterback Ferragamo became the victim of some dropped passes. The Rams could do nothing in their first two possessions with Ferragamo at the controls. But on their third try, they pulled off their biggest play of the game, a 65-yarder to wide receiver Willie Miller, number 82. From the end zone camera, we can see that Miller found more than enough solitude underneath the cowboy zone to make the catch then executed a perfect tightrope run down the sidelines to put Los Angeles well within scoring range. But 
then the Rams committed yet another costly mistake when Cullen Bryant fumbled the ball away into the arms of Harvey Martin. This fifth Ram turnover was a backbreaker, seemingly taking all the air out of Los Angeles's balloon. The Rams could only hope their defense would force a cowboy miscue, but they couldn't. In fact, they were immediately victimized by Tony Dorsett, who broke off Dallas's longest play of the game of 53 yards. Dorsett was personally responsible for 70 of the 89 yards gained in the drive. A march culminated by Staubach's second touchdown pass of the contest. On the receiving end was tight end Billy Joe Dupree. Dallas just about put the game in the freezer with this score. Both the play and Dupree's imposing spike merit a second look. Staubach ran a play fake to his back, sending most of the Ram defenders to the left. Dupree ran a crossing pattern to the other side where he was quite alone for the catch. Dallas knew Ferragamo would have to throw on almost every down. Yet the youngsters still moved the team into cowboy territory by throwing effectively under Dallas's prevent defense. But in the end, even this would not succeed. In a play that seemed to capsulize the story of the game, loquacious cowboy linebacker Thomas Henderson, number 56, made the fourth Dallas interception, then ran it back 68 yards for a salt in the wound at touchdown. Henderson had said before the game that Dallas would destroy L.A. This bulletin board statement undoubtedly fired up the Rams, but apparently not enough to make Hollywood Henderson eat his words. Henderson had the second to last laugh. The final honors were awarded to Cliff Harris, number 43, who thwarted the Rams' last gasp drive by intercepting pass number five. By dominating defensively throughout the game, then finally wearing down a tenacious Ram defense, the Cowboys could claim this most one-sided victory. The 28-0 decision gave Dallas their second consecutive NFC crown and their third title in the last four years. For Tom Landry and company, it's now on to Super Bowl 13 for defense of their NFL championship. Their opponents will be the AFC champion, Pittsburgh Steelers, and both clubs will be going for an historic third Super Bowl victory. It will also be a rematch of Super Bowl X, the most competitive of all the Super Bowls. Dallas lost that one, giving them still another reason for wanting to win this time. But no matter what the outcome, it's been another fine season down in Big D. And except for some folks in western Pennsylvania, Few might argue that the Cowboys aren't still the class act of professional football. <laughs>